Before we get into today's video, some regulatory compliance. My name is Andrew Alexander. I am Head of Investments for Three Counties, an independent financial advisor based in County Durham, England. This video is for anyone who has an interest in investing and investment markets, both retail clients with no experience of investing through to industry professionals who invest for themselves and their clients. As independent financial advisors and wealth managers, there is no commercial relationship between ourselves and today's guest. The purpose of this video is educational and in no way should any of the content be construed as advice, nor is it an enticement to invest. Past performance is not a guide to future performance, nor a reliable indicator of future results or performance. The value of investments may go down as well as up and is not guaranteed. Therefore, investors may not get back the amount originally invested. Now, onto the video. Welcome everyone to another of our weekly investment manager videos and many thanks once again for tuning in. Can you hear that? Yes, yes. that's right. Jingle bells. As 2021 draws to an end, I thought it would be interest to gather some of the country's best investors to outline how the year has been for them and their outlook into 22 and beyond within their own particular asset class. So where better to start this off than here in good old blighty so uk equities it's gonna be then and who better to give us their view than alexander jackson manager of the rathbone uk opportunities fund a stock picking best of the uk fund but first before we get into the content as ever it would be wonderful if you could subscribe if you haven't already it really does help us in delivering all of the content that we do on a weekly basis so with the begging out of the way and the introductions over many thanks for joining us today um right off the bat as we move into the end of 21 how has the uk market performed hi thank you for having me yeah it's been a really strong year for the uk market and i think probably you know has surprised some people by how strong it's been actually um the benchmark the you know the all share is up 16 and a half percent so far this year um, and until recently, actually, it was really the 250 that had driven performance. Um, that's kind of how we saw the year panning out broadly, I would say. Um, you know, Andrew, when we talked back in January, yeah. we kind of talked about that valuation discount that we saw um, in the UK as a whole, but that it was particularly attractive in that mid cap space where you could combine that valuation discount with uh, exciting growth. Um, and then on top of that, we've seen a surge in M&A. So I think it was, you know, it felt like it was one a week back in, you know, at the beginning of the summer there. Um, and actually, again, what was interesting to me about the M&A is that we saw more M&A in terms of um, value in the 250 rather than in the FTSE 100. You know, that's quite difficult to achieve given the relative sizes of the industry. So it just kind of shows me where the opportunities lie, where private long term capital thinks the interesting um, opportunities are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all that activity, the kind of resurgence of animal spirits that we saw a little bit as well, that's really helped push up valuations across the space. So the summer was very, um, uh, you know, very positive for UK mm -hmm. equities, particularly. Yeah. And then, of course, we saw that um, tug of war around growth and value. Uh, you know, thinking about bond yields, yep. um, value, I guess, won the first quarter mm -hmm. and then growth, I think, won the middle two. Uh, we might get a draw in the final quarter. Not sure yet. Um, and, you know, this fund tends to underperform during value rallies because mm -hmm. we prefer to own those kind of quality growth businesses where you know management are a bit more in control. They've got those levers to pull. They're not reliant just on oil prices or, uh, yeah. um, you know, on the state of the economy. So, you know, you'd expect a fund like ours to lag in Q1. But actually what's interesting is that you... You know, we made it back and more over the summer. Yeah. Um, basically, as soon as earnings season kicks off, you see, um, you know, you see why you want to own quality growth again, because they mm -hmm. are the stocks that can provide that repeatable, resilient earnings when, you know, when we're in times of kind of turbulence, when a lot of things are changing, when we're worried about whatever it is, inflation, supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. um, it's the really high quality businesses that are able to kind of sail through those. Mm -hmm. No, no. You are obviously a renowned stock picker. Um, it feels to me, on a macro front, that we're moving into a period of of change. You know, rising bond yields, potential tapering, um, or that changes from week to week. Um, inflationary forces. Obviously, the U.S. numbers just came out at six point two, so which is a can he handle? Um, what's your outlook for twenty two and beyond? 
Yeah, I, I mean, change is the, is the only constant, isn't it? But mm. it does feel choppier on a day-to-day -day basis at the moment, I would mm. say. I think, you know, everyone's trying to position for a world in which rates are likely to be moving up. Yeah. Um, the quantum of that, I guess, is, is what we're kind of all trying to work out at the moment. Um, when in doubt, I go back to my companies. So I've had lots of company meetings recently. I've been asking them how, how they're feeling about 2022. Um, they say things to me like, um, you know, if we can survive COVID, we can survive anything else that is thrown at us. So, and when I look across, um, you know, what people have been saying through results season so far, they're using words like optimistic, upbeat, um, positive. That's, I think, quite different probably to what, you know, if you just read the papers for the last few weeks, yeah. you'd think um, that we're in a completely different place. You know, I think it's really easy to construct a narrative of, you know, queues at petrol stations, shortages, no toys on the shelves at Christmas, yeah. rampant inflation, central banks behind the curve. Um, but actually, we, you know, we haven't seen the same level of coverage of gas prices now down 40 percent mm -hmm. and freight rates down now from that, you know, really significantly down from their peaks and mm -hmm. all those supply chain issues easing. So while they, they make great headlines and that, you know, it's really interesting to read about, um, I think we're seeing a lot of those, the, the main parts of those issues are now in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. So actually for 2022, I feel quite positive um, that, you know, a lot of the things we've been focusing on recently um, actually are going to give us that ability to kind of move forward over the next mm -hmm. few months. Mm -hmm. um, what I do see is though, is that growth, you know, we are in a kind of growth slowdown. Um, and, in, and at that point, again, you want to own quality again. Um, this is exactly the time when you, when you want to be really focused on those businesses that can generate cash, that yeah. can grow through the cycle. Um, we saw a company last week who uh, they've spent a little bit of their cash on buying more inventory, uh, Howden Joinery, the kitchen people. All right, yeah. So because they generate so much cash, because they've got such a strong balance sheet, those are some of the reasons why we like it so much. They've been able to buy more kitchens earlier on to, in, to make sure that they're not sold out. And lots of our companies have been doing things like that. Right. Um, that's why we want to own them. So right. we think that you know, in times when growth is slowing a little bit, you really want to double down on those businesses that can still grow through the cycle. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus again on the companies that we think can um, at least meet their earnings expectations, but also beat them, move their earnings forward. You know, those companies that we think can be multiple times the size on a three to five year view. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're probably likely to see quite a nice CapEx boom continuing into next year as well. Um, CapEx nowadays uh, is a little bit different probably to what it meant 15, 20 years ago. Like we've just been talking about your um, your IT uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. um, that's what CapEx means now. It means um, software, it means AI, it means, um, you know, helping automate businesses, productivity gains. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those kind of companies will be really interesting to look at next year as well. Okay, it's it's fascinating times. And um, looking at your fund, as I said, it is it is truly a, uh, as, as I've called it, a, a, a best of the UK fund. Um, how are you currently positioned in terms of um, capitalization split? And, and and then also, um, what would you say are, are your best ideas at this moment in time within the fund? Yeah, um, yeah, I really like the way you described the fund. Um, our investment process is kind of trying to lead us into identifying UK stocks that mm -hmm. share the characteristics of some of the world's most successful growth stocks. Mm -hmm. So it's things like margins, you know, higher margins than what you typically get in the FTSE 100, better growth, lower leverage, so better returns all over. And as you say, we're trying to offer the best of the full potential of the entire UK market. So it's finding those companies that can compete on a world stage. Yeah. Um, you know, when I started my career, I was working in our global team. And so I think I know a a bit about what good looks like. I'm not comparing these UK businesses just to other UK small companies, mm -hmm. but to their global peers. Yeah. Um, and I think what that means, and because of that process, the way we look for our companies, is that in terms of sector splits, for example, the fund looks a lot more like a global benchmark than it looks like the UK market. So for example, our biggest overweight is technology. Mm -hmm. About 16% of the fund is in the tech sector versus you know, I think it's one and a half, not even that in the index. Mm -hmm. um, that's because, you know, tech companies have a lot of those characteristics that we like, the recurring revenue, um, cash flow, that kind of thing. Um, and then, and, you know, people say that there isn't any tech in the UK, which is, it's kind of true. So you have to look in the 250 and aim. There isn't any tech in the headline index. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can go a bit lower, 
uh, there really is, there, there are some brilliant tech businesses. Yeah. Um, then we've got big position in industrials. That's kind of where we get beta to the cycle, but mm -hmm. without some of the headaches you get from the other really cyclical sectors. Yeah. Uh, and those make up our big underweights. So we've got no banks, um, no oil companies, no mining companies, no utilities, uh, no tobacco, no airlines, no luxury goods. So big, big um, bets away from the benchmark, um, big active positions. Uh, and you can sort of tell by that skew that we're very underweight value, but mm -hmm. also that we are underweight large caps. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we are about 25% invested in large caps. Okay. So above kind of 5 billion, which mm -hmm. is about where the FTSE kicks in. Um, whereas our benchmark is 80% large cap. So again, it's a big move. Um, we just don't find enough growth in the large cap area. The bulk of the fund, two thirds of the fund is invested in mid caps. So between 500 million and 5 billion, mm -hmm. uh, that's where we find that kind of concentration of really interesting uh, world-class businesses that have growth and that valuation discount. Yeah. Um, and then the small cap exposure at the moment is smaller than it's been for a while at, at 6%, which is um, partly to do, well, mainly really because a lot of our small caps have done really, really well over the last 12 to 18 months after yeah. they've become mid caps. Mm -hmm. I think if anything people take away from watching this it is again I'll, I'll keep on coming back to it it's 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 the best of the UK and, and the UK is renowned throughout the world for innovation for for growing companies for the for the smaller end of the capitalization scale and again from the conversations that we've had over over the last 12 to 18 months it's 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 apparent that that's where your focus is so again i'll keep coming back with the best of the uk fund let's hope that the uk is as positive as as we both believe it will be over over the next um you know 12 18 24 months as the world wakes up and realizes there's more than just the us um yeah. but as a uh, Alexandra, it's an absolute pleasure speaking to you once again. Um, I'm sure we'll catch up soon, so so you you stay safe. Likewise, you too.